My name is Mike Collins. I'm a comic book artist and storyboard artist and illustrator. I've been working, uh, drawing stories for a living for 25 years now. Um, I've worked for Marvel Comics and DC Comics in the States. I work for 2000 AD and Panini over here. Um, I've drawn the X-Men, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, The Flash, Teen Titans, um, Judge Dredd, Slain, Rogue Trooper. Um, I'm one of the main artists on the Doctor Who magazine and recently produced a Doctor Who original graphic novel, The Only Good Dialect, in all the bookshops now. And I'm currently a storyboard artist on the Horrid Henry TV show. One of the things about creating a character is coming up with a memorable name. It doesn't have to be necessarily a clever name. Um, if you think about it, Batman and Spider-Man are blindingly obvious names. One's got attributes of a bat, one's got attributes of a spider. Um, I wanted to come up with a name for a cyborg who I imagine would be part of a series who was a killer. And the first thing that came into my head, and unfortunately would not go away, was the name Assassin 8. So he is Assassin 8. <laughs> We go around assassinating people. Um, I've recently had to redesign it. It's a character created several years ago for Marvel UK. And I had to sort of bring the design that I'd done then up to date with the way that um, a lot of particularly uh, manga influences have come into comics now. And I wanted to get a bit of that feel to the artwork. So it's still a, um, a Marvel character, but I wanted to give him a bit of an edge and make him look a bit more contemporary. So I've sort of changed the uh, design of his uniform, uh, changed the cybernetic bits to him, uh, just to make him look a bit harder and nastier. What's happened with Captain Britain is that there's a character that was created by American Marvel who wanted to cash in on the superhero uh, fad that was going on in the uh, late 70s, early 80s in Britain. And to that end, they wanted to give Britain their own hero. They didn't really know what worked as a hero in Britain. So originally they gave him a costume that was entirely red with uh, an, a yellow lion on the front of him, which didn't really capture the feel of Britain. Um, in the mid-80s, uh, a, a British comic artist called Alan Davies came along, and part of his brief in taking on the Captain Britain character was to give him a costume that felt more British. So he actually designed the costume around the, uh, the Union Jack. So rather than just having red represented in there, you've got all the colours that's been refined and refined. And the most recent version of Captain Britain that's been appearing in an American comic, uh, his costume is in fact just the straightforward Union Jack on a, um, an almost black background. Uh, what we're doing in the strip for Panini at the moment is going back to the, the Alan Davies classic from about 25 years ago, um, trying to bring that back because that's sort of like, I think the most iconic version of the character. Because it's one of these things about designing a character, you want to get across the thing you're trying to say about that character. And when you've got a character that wears a uniform like that, there's no doubt where he's coming from. It's obviously, he's British. Superhero design. Now, superheroes have been around since the late 1930s, early 1940s. When they started, they were based on pretty much wrestler costumes. So it tended to be uh, lots of shorts, lots of tights. And that sort of stayed the tradition ever since. There's something fantastical about having characters wander around in really bright colours. Uh, certainly the heroes anyway, the villains tend to wear black. Um, and it's quite interesting if you're coming to design your own character to look at what's gone before. You can either go for the uh, daytime colours of a Spider-Man or a Superman, which are very bright blues, very bright reds, or you can go for the slightly darker and more nighttime colours of a character like Batman. So it's all about blending or showing up in your environment, and that's one of the things you've got to consider. Do you want your character to be somebody that stands out, or do you want somebody that lurks in the background? If you look at a char characters like the Fantastic Four, Fantastic Four are uh, a family of superheroes, and their costumes are all uh, aren't exactly the same but they certainly blend together so if your characters are in some way linked do you want to design a costume that in some way shows they're part of a group? Um, a lot of modern superhero costumes if you look at the say the things that Brian Hitch designed for the Ultimates which is the relaunch of the Marvel Comics works uh, looked at things like modern jumpsuits or uh, bike outfits uh, costumes which are 
reasonably tight fitting but also things you're able to work with so if you're in a fight you don't want something that's too constricting and also you want something with a bit of padding on it as well so you've got to think about what your character does what your character wants to do what you want to do with your character and if you're going to design a costume have those elements in mind if you want it to be a bright flying character then use bright colors if that's not what you're going for well think again